let's think this through. Let's try to list everything that has to happen at a standard recall exam. Well, you have to take a radiograph and compare it to the previous radiograph, yes? You have to examine the tooth, test for percussion, palpation, mobility, take probings, and compare those with the prior probings, right? Then you have to examine the soft tissue, the restoration, the occlusion, and possibly take some photos. You have to form a diagnosis and record all of your findings for that date, as well as schedule future recalls, yes? And finally, you have to issue a recall findings report and send it to interested parties. So these are the five things that need to be done at every recall. But these are not the only things. I can think of five additional things that should be done. To save time, let's list them all on one page. Don't you want to indicate if the tooth has been restored? Don't you want to indicate if there's any indication of coronal leakage or a problem with the restoration? Would it be advantageous to flag the case for special attention to make sure the recall is followed up on? Don't you want access to all prior recalls that were performed to detect a trend? And don't you really want to see the pre-op, post-op, and last two recalls at least in one view? So there aren't five things that need to be done. There are ten things, and maybe I haven't even thought of them all here. Are you sure that you can do all these things in a crippled op? Given that all that has to happen to do a proper recall, I can make a promise to you. It's easier, faster, better, healthier, and more profitable to do it our way. And now I'm going to prove it to you. This is our ergonomic recall form in TDO. I'm sure Endovision and PBS have something very similar, but this is the one I designed, so I'm intimately familiar with it. I'm going to focus on ours. I call it an ergonomic form because all those 10 things you need to do for a recall can be done without leaving the form. More importantly, when performing a recall, you never have to leave this form. The recall is done completely from one form, including radiographs, pictures, data collection, notes, final report. I'm going to show you a recent recall we did from start to finish. The entire recall took about six minutes. The patient was kind enough to let us go pro the appointment just for this presentation. This is kind of the standard recall we do in our office. We are going to watch the entire appointment first at high speed to give you a sense of the overall flow and then look at some important details in slower motion later. Finally, I will go through the recall form with you as if we were filling it out at the appointment. Let's review the ergonomics of the recall exam from start to finish. Notice the patient comes into the operatory, and when they sit down, Joy effortlessly rotates the chair toward my entrance so that I am facing the patient as soon as I come into the operatory. Notice how the chair is rotated. Now entering, I'm facing the patient directly, not from the side. Joy's job is to bring up the recall form. You can see her looking at the screen on the cart. Now we're ready to start the recall. Let's look at the procedure from start to finish without stopping first. Very speeded up so you can get a sense of the overall view of it. Through this procedure, I'm doing the recall exam. I'm testing for percussion, palpation, looking at the restoration, checking for marginal integrity, doing my probings, taking the radiograph, and then presenting the case to the patient. This entire recall took a little over six minutes. Here I'm sending the final report to the doctor. I like to do this when the patient can see it. And I'm also doing the case presentation on the recall with the patient using the image organizer to show the pictures that we took. Now let's look at some of the finer details that are easy to overlook. The first thing I notice 
is that there's a periodontal probing on this tooth that wasn't there previously. I'm reading off the probings to Joy right now all around the tooth. So she's entering that. And she also knows we're going to want to take some pictures at the same time. So she's getting the camera set up and getting ready to snap some pictures. You can see I've put the buckle probing at seven, and during this time, I have looked at the tooth and answered some questions. Has the tooth been restored? Does it look like there's any coronal leakage? Is it asymptomatic? Is there any palpation, percussion, mobility, sinus tract? Joy is recording all of this contemporaneously as we do it. And now she's actually taking pictures here. You can see how efficient this is. We actually took four pictures during this whole procedure. And this angle shows the picture actually going in. Joy is triggering the camera from the recall form. And I am just manipulating my mirror to get good angles. And she is actually defogging the mirror so that the pictures are absolutely clear. I'm focusing with my knees. You'll notice I'm not touching the microscope at all. I'm continually focusing with my knees under the back of the chair. And when Joy sees that it's focused, she snaps the picture. This whole picture-taking sequence of four pictures took less than a minute. Now I'm going to take the recall radiograph. Again, Notice being able to rotate the chair easily is important. There's an ergonomic technique to it with minimal motions. We take the radiograph, and now we put the patient up, rotate them so they face the screen directly, and I'm reviewing the recall with the patient, and I'm actually sending the report here. I'd like, I'd like the patient to see that we're actually sending the report right from the operatory. Then I go into the image organizer, and I'm talking to the patient about the case using the pictures that we've taken. So they have a full understanding of what my concerns are and what is being uh, told to the referring doctor. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Okay. Say hello to Tom for me, and I'll do it. Okay. <laughs>